Hi, today I am so excited to be able to share with you 10 of my favorite Dollar Tree ideas for Easter. I grabbed my absolute favorite ones from last year, pull them all into one video to make it so easy for you because I know so many of you are new to my channel and you would have missed these and I didn't want you to miss out. If you are new, hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer and this is a little bit of Calm and Crazy. I love to share with you easy DIYs, budget decor, and if you love that, make sure that you hit that subscribe button it's absolutely free. And don't forget to come follow me on Instagram. It's a little bit of common crazy over there, just like it is here. Over on Instagram, I love to share with you a little bit more personal things about me, some mini videos that I may not share here. So come and check it out over there. And without any further ado, let's get into these 10 DIYs. For my first project, all you need is a gift bag and a picture frame. Now I wanted my picture frame to match my gift bag a little bit better. So I went in with some white acrylic paint. You could use chalk paint, you could spray paint it, whatever you wanna do. After that, I needed my gift bag to fit inside of my picture frame. So I'm just using the glass insert to help me to do that. And my favorite craft knife, which is a Fisker one, I'll make sure I link that for you in the description box below. It is that simple, put everything back inside the picture frame and there you have a super simple, easy Easter project. As you can see, I chose to put the glass behind the cut gift bag, but you could do it either way. I just wanted to avoid that glare, but I absolutely love this and Dollar Tree offers so many different options with their gift bags. For project number two, you would need a tinsel bunny and some burlap. Go ahead and just pull that bow right off and then you can remove the tinsel. If I ever get stuck or at the beginning, I just give it a quick little snip. The tinsel is just wrapped around and it comes off really easily. After you have your tinsel completely off, it is time to wrap your bunny in your burlap. Now here you see that I'm actually using some burlap that I received from burlapfabric.com. I got this last year and I love this burlap because it is a tighter weave than the burlap that you get from Dollar Tree, but you can use which, whatever burlap you wanna use. I would suggest that you use a skinnier burlap it's easier than going in with a wider burlap for this project. So that's the only tip that I do have. Now, I went in in sections, so you see that I did the body first, and then I go in with the head. Now, when I'm working with the head, I do make sure that I take time around the ears, and then I do weave the burlap through his ears and making sure that I cover up all of the plastic. So I didn't bother cutting off those little pokey bits, but if you wanted to and you don't like them, go ahead and cut them off. Now I will tell you that the ears are the part that will take your most of your attention, especially these top parts. Now I did have to fold the burlap in half up here and this is why I said go in with a skinnier piece instead of a wider piece because that way you do not lose the shape of that top of your ear you want to make sure that you really get that part covered as well as keeping that shape. So I just folded it in half and just really took my time around that very tippy top of that ear. But I love how the burlap looks on these ears. Now, after I got him completely covered, I went in with the pink burlap that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. I folded that up in half, cinched in that middle and created a bow for him by using just another piece of the burlap to just place in that middle to hold that together. And I just love how he turned out. I think he's so cute. If you don't love pink, of course you can use any other color for his bow tie, but there you have it, project number two. My third project, I'm going in with the larger clay pots that have two to a set, some twine, some white paint, and then this cute little sign that has the white bunny on it, as well as some wood dowels, floral foam, and grass. I'm starting off by painting the clay pots with the apple barrel paint, acrylic paint in white. You could also use chalk paint. You could use a colored paint. It doesn't really matter. If you have something already on hand, I think that would probably be the perfect paint. I also went ahead and I painted the wooden rods in the same white paint. To help the floral foam to stay in place, I went ahead and just added a little drop of hot glue at the bottom. And then I'm taking some hot glue in order to help secure the twine that I'm wrapping around the outside of the clay pot. Once I have the twine wrapped around, oh, I think it went about 
about seven times, I decided I was gonna add a bow. So I just wrap that around my fingers again about six or seven times and then I take another piece of twine and wrap that around the center and tie it off into a knot and then secure that on the twine that's on the pot with some more hot glue. I'm always using my favorite hot glue gun, which is a Surebonder hot glue gun. I have several of them. I love them all. <laughs> so of course I use the same hot glue gun in order to attach the sticks to the bunny. Now, if you don't like the rawness of the bunny on the back, you can always cover it up with some paper, some contact paper, anything like that. To cover up the floral foam, I'm just going in with the grass. I'm just shoving it right into the pot and then I take a pair of scissors and just trim some of those little wild hairs and there you have it. I chose to go with three bunnies. I love odd numbers, but you could do as few or as many as you wanted with this kind of a project, and I think it's absolutely adorable. For my fourth project, I will be using this free printable that I found online. I will definitely link that for you in the description box below. I will also be using some contact paper, and then I have a framed saying that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. I like this size of a frame. It fits the size of the printable that I have perfectly. I will also be using some Waverly wax in the color antique, and some white acrylic paint as well. To start off with, I'm just peeling the back of my contact paper so that I can place my printable straight onto the contact paper. Now you can decide if you want to do it either side up or side down, depending on which way you want your bunny to face. It really doesn't matter. After you, you get it on there, you are just going to cut out your bunny. It is that simple. I personally didn't like the color of these frames for this project, so in order to take care of that, I just went in with a white acrylic paint, and I wanted my paper to have like a faux wood effect. I actually did this project on wood, and that was my inspiration to also do it a Dollar Tree style, and so in order to do that, I just use the Waverly Wax with a dry brush technique in order to create that faux wood style. Once everything had dried, I put the paint and cardstock into the frame and closed up the frame with its backing. And then it was time for me to go ahead and add the bunny. In order to secure the bunny onto it, I just used a little bit of hot glue. And to give the bunny its cute little tail, I just used your traditional cotton ball. I just think these are so cute and adorable and so easy to make. And if you love wood, I will link the video at the end and in the description box so you can check out the wood version as well. Project five is another one where I gave two options in my video last year, but today I'm only gonna share the Dollar Tree one, and I'm using that sign that I used earlier with those little white bunnies. I wanted to put that sign to good use. So you will need to grab a sign, and you could use that one or any sign will do for this project. I am using that exact same printout that I used in project number four. I'm using some Waverly Wax in Antique again, and this time I'm also using Waverly's chalk paint in Ivory. Now, I could not let that contact go, paper go to waste in that previous project, and I'm gonna show you how I used that to create a stencil for this project. So I took that exact same contact paper after I cut out that bunny, and I'm taking just some scraps of the contact paper and wrapping it around any parts where I had cut through. You could also use tape for that. It's just whatever you have lying around. You just wanna make sure that you don't have any open areas. So now I am taking my Waverly chalk paint and ivory, and I'm giving a really good base coat to my sign. Again, it doesn't have to be the exact same sign. Any sign will do for this project. This is just a sign that I had lying around, so it was perfect for me to use. Once my paint had completely dried, I just laid my stencil straight onto my sign and I just traced it out. If you wanted to go straight in with the paint, you could try that, but I was worried it wouldn't lay flat. So this is the option that I chose to do. After that, I went in with Waverly's wax paint and I just painted it out. Now, here I borrowed my daughter's Crayola paintbrush. I did not have good choices of paintbrush at this time. Any paintbrush you have will be fine. I gave it a nice sanding just to soften those edges. And then I took some twine around my edges because of the way that this sign is. I felt like the bunny needed to be framed out a little bit. If you had a more rectangle sign, you may not feel that way. Now for this tail, I chose to use some rope and some hot glue in order to secure that rope. And I just twirled the rope around. Now, if you wanted a plain cotton tail, of course you could do that as well. But I love how the rope looked as a tail on him. I think it is just so cute. Of course, I'm going to leave the wooden version linked for you as well, so you can go check that one out. But isn't he just adorable, and he was so easy to make. 
For project number six, I did go in again with another free printable that I found online, but this is a different bunny, just notice the feet, and I used some contact paper again to create a thicker pattern so that I could create multiple bunnies. I'm creating a garland and I like to go and work with odd numbers and the number that you will need will determine the length of the garland that you want. So when I created this, I wanted to use the burlap paper. Now you can pick this up like a Hobby Lobby, even Walmart will carry it. But of course you could use like cardstock or a scrapbook paper to do this as well. After I had cut out all the bunnies, I went in with Waverly's Wax and Antique and I just distressed the very edges of the bunny in order to give them a little bit more dimension. And then it was time to add their little cotton tail and I just use a little white pom-poms in order to do that with a little bit of hot glue. In order to hang my bunnies, I just use some mini clothespins and some twine. And that way my bunnies could be movable or adjustable. They weren't stuck in one spot. And I just hung them right by their ear. And I think that is so adorable. I absolutely love this garland. I think it is so cute. For project number 11, I took the exact same bunnies and went through the exact same process of getting them all ready, but this time instead of hanging them on a string to create a garland, I put them on a wooden dowel and created a bunny on a stick and put them in a pot similar to what I had done in an earlier project. And so for the pot, of course, I have a couple of terracotta pots, some white paint and twine. Exactly what I did earlier, I painted the pot. I then added some twine around it, including a twine bow, and then I stuck some floral foam in it, covered it with grass, and stuck the bunny inside. Super easy, but absolutely adorable. For project number eight, I took one of the wooden Easter eggs that you can pick up at Dollar Tree and some scrapbook paper that I had lying around in my stash. I started by tracing out the egg and then cutting it out. Now. If you've been around, you know that my favorite way is to go ahead and just put Mod Podge directly on the egg and then sandpaper the paper off. It's my favorite way. And if you wanna make sure that you don't miss any of my better tips and tricks that I have learned over time, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so that you are always updated as I learn things, I share them with you. As you can see, before I could add my paper, I did have to do a quick sanding to get a little bit of that glitter off and then I could add a thin coat of Mod Podge. Once I had the Mod Podge on, I went ahead and placed my paper on and then I smoothed it out to make sure that I had no lumps or bumps. Using Waverly's Wax and Antique, I distressed around the edges and just gave it a little bit more dimension and an aged egg look. Once everything is dried, just go in with another thin coat of Mod Podge just to seal and protect it. To embellish my egg, of course I needed some ribbon, so I went in with the burlap and lace, but the lace was too white, so I had to distress it again using that wax and antique. And then to secure it, I just wrapped it around and used a little bit of hot glue to do that. And I grabbed a little tin from Dollar Tree. I used some floral foam, some rocks to keep it weighted, and then covered it with some reindeer moss. It was so easy to do, and I love the way that it turned out. Again, such a simple project, but I love how it turned out. The smaller one, I just used cardboard in order to make it. I will link that video for you as well. Project number nine, I'm making a super cute but easy Easter wreath using this darling bunny sign. You will also need some Chanel stems or pipe cleaners, some twine, a wreath form, as well as some burlap. Now, I'm using a wider burlap here, but you could also use any with a burlap that you want to use. So to start off, I'm just taking the bunny apart. So the bunny head separated by the carrots, they are actually stapled in. You, all you need to do is just cut it off. Don't worry about those staples. And I am removing the bow because I will be using my own little bow. Next, I just took the twine and I wrapped it around the carrot between the top and the bottom several different times. I don't know, probably like seven. And then I tied that into a knot. I did that for both carrots. For my bow, it was so easy because I'm using a six inch burlap. I just took a piece, kind of eyeballed the amount that I needed, cut it off, cut it off and then the hot glued it 
into a tube and then I took a smaller piece in order to wrap around it and to, to cinch that up. Now my ends were opened up and I wanted those closed so that they would create a better bow. So I just took the hot glue and closed those up and that created that bow for me. So technically now I have a girl bunny with a big old bow and I think she is darling. I wrap that same burlap around the wreath form in order to cover that up and I just use hot glue in order to secure that. In order to secure my bunny head, I'm just going in with those chenille stems. Because you won't see them, it's not a big deal to use those and some hot glue in order to secure those down. This is a great way to repurpose a wreath later on if you want to. So I just put that on and twist it down. Now for the carrots, you would see the chenille stems. So I actually just went in, hot glued some twine onto the carrots and tied the carrots on with the twine. And I think that this wreath turned out so cute. I absolutely love it. And it was so easy to do. For project number 10, I used a cute little bunny and an Easter basket. Start off with, I just removed a little spring banner and then I'm gonna go in with my utility knife and I'm gonna remove the top of the bunny from the bottom of the bunny using the line of, it looks like a hat y'all, but it's, her little dress is the separation line and it, you just have to pass over it several different times. It looks like I only went over it a couple times. I promise I went over it more than that and it will separate. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You can just sand those little edges if they're not perfect. After that, you go in with your utility knife and you separate the face of the bunny from the arms of the bunny. Again, you can use pencil lines that if you need to, or you can just eyeball it, whichever works best for you. After that, I took some hot glue and the rope and just took it around the top of the basket a few times. Then I decided that I should paint the basket. So I'm going in with Waverly's chalk paint in plaster and painting the bottom of the basket and then just the very top of it between where the rope is i will be covering up also the top of it with some burlap as well and making it look like a fabric inside of it and so i'm using that six inch burlap that i have showed earlier and hot gluing that just around and tucking that inside the basket adding any extra hot glue where needed to keep that burlap laying down the way that i want it I finished hot gluing the rope on to cover up the rest of the area that I had not painted. I used a little bit of fire in order to singe that end of the rope so that it would not fray and then hot glue that down to secure it. After that, I hot glued the bunny in his hands on and added some of that grass that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. And then the basket was ready for whatever you wanna put in it. And I think he is absolutely adorable. Well, apparently 10 wasn't enough, so I have a bonus one for you using this cute little bunny, as well as these eggs, and I also have this fence. Now, I picked up the fence at the 99 cent store. I have a video on how you can create your own fence. Super easy, so I will share that with you as well. This is such an easy project, but it is so adorable. You will also need some of the wood letters, and some paint. I'm using some white acrylic paint. I also will be using some black acrylic paint. Choose your favorite paint. Simply start by re carefully removing the banner from the bunny, and then you're going to be attaching your bunny straight onto the fence, just using some wood glue in order to do that. After that, I went ahead and grabbed out the letters to spell the word spring, and I painted them with the white paint. And then I separated the eggs from their little string and then I laid everything out on the fence to get an idea of where I wanted it. Once I did that I realized that my letters needed a little bit more pop and I took the black paint around the edges just to help them pop. I use wood glue in order to attach everything to the fence. I think that this is so cute. Now remember I will link a video so that you can check out how you can make your own fence. You don't need to try to find a fence if you don't have one easily available to you. To finish everything up, I did not like the Easter showing through the fence, so I did take some pink burlap that you can get at the Dollar Tree and I weaved that 
underneath the fence to cover up that Easter and then secure that with some hot glue on the back of the bunny. And I thought that looked much better. I think this bunny is so adorable on this fence. I absolutely love him and thought he was worth giving you a bonus. So I just pulled these out of the bin so I could get some film and footage for you to see what they look like and I love these as much this year as I did last year and I hope that you do too. Now I will share the video of how I decorated my home last year because you know it's never going to be the same as well as those other videos that I promised you right here. Now don't forget hit that subscribe button you don't want to miss any of my future videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!